kamaskiza tuni yako bonyeza star 812 star 501 hash kijana kanipigia simu amejawa na huzuni amefadhaika yohoi nikamuuliza kunani depo nimetia jitihada za mtu wa kujenga nyumba kwa mate nikaongeza kumcha Mungu sifanikiwi naishi kama lofa mlala hoi kabwela au madongo kupata msubiri Mungu kama skiza tu bonyeza star 812 star 501 hash star 812 star 501 hash Good evening. If you're a government employee with fake papers, the government is putting you on the spot today as a means of reducing the wage bill. It will start with those that applied for their jobs with fake papers. We have details lined up for you tonight. Other than that is that should the proposed 4.5 trillion shillings budget sail through in its current form, expect a few tax measures or other reforms as government works to ensure that it gets to spend that money in the next financial year 2024 mm -hmm. 2025 the ripple effect may be the high cost of insurance premiums absolutely now focus tonight on prime edition we'll be speaking about the mining sector and we have the principal secretary in charge of the state department for mining elijah mwangi who joins us in studio a little bit later but for now the highlights ESCC DCI must move with full speed to recover public resources that were spent on this bill. The wage bill quagmire. More than 2,000 public servants with fake academic certificates to be fired in a bid to slash ballooning wage bill. Striking medics lock horns with the government over return to work talks modalities. And I could pass the DPP from charging former Muranga Governor Mwangi area with graft. You are very much welcome to this broadcast. My name is John Jacob Curia. Our signed language interpreter tonight is Brian Muraru. Good evening, I'm Regina Manyara. Now, President William Ruto has ordered the immediate expunging from the government payroll over 2,000 public servants holding fake academic certificates. The president, while addressing the third national wage bill, also instructed ministries and corporations to provide a report of action taken to correct audit queries raised. The conference resolved to, among others, reduce the public wage bill to the recommended 35% of collected revenue by 2027, as given us in mind in our reports. The three-day National Wage Bill Conference at the Bombers of Kenya culminated into a nine-point resolution adopted to reduce the ballooning public wage bill from the current 46%, an equivalent of 1.1 trillion shillings a year, to that 5% of the country's revenue. President William Ruto saying, however difficult and unpopular, the resolutions must be implemented by 2027. Manual, multiple, and standalone payroll systems to cease. These resolutions include reviewing of public institutions to rationalize their staff and align to affordability, right composition, skill set, and fit for purpose organization structure. Reviewing the Kenyan model for performance management by December 2024 to shift from measurement of activities to outputs. 
national and county governments to adopt and build capacity of performers contracting effective from 1st July 2024. Migrating of payrolls of both national and county governments to a single payroll called Human Resource Information System Kenya by 30th June 2025 and eliminating duplications of functions in both levels of government. The president reading a riot act to over 2,000 public servants holding fake academic papers, sentiments echoed by Deputy President Gadiga Shagwa. Already, the 2,100 identified people who have been earning government wages and salaries with fake certificates so that to Sisumbuane, they should just refund the money we pay them as salaries and wages. What wengi wako kwa serikali, wengine magavana, wengine heads of department, wengine wamekaa huku, wengine wamekaa na wewe hapa. Makaratasi yao, yuko dosari. Ministries and other public entities were also ordered to provide a report of action taken to correct anomalies, flood in audit queries. President William Ruto has said the reduction of the public wage bill to the required that 5% of the country's revenue will be a painful and difficult process. He however says it must be achieved even earlier by the year 2027. Give us in Mayana, prime edition at the Bombers of Kenya, Nairobi. The president pronouncing himself, have your papers correct. Now the court has extended orders stopping the ongoing doctor's strike and directed both parties to show good faith and engage in constructive dialogue. This comes as doctors and the government locked horns over modalities of engaging in talks. The government has maintained negotiations will only resume after doctors return to work, while doctors say they will only discuss a return to work formula after implementation of their irreducible minimums. Our reporter Abdiaziz Hashim has the details on a day the health CSC is and Nakumicha a shuff, or rather a shuffled between the Senate and uh, the National Assembly to explain measures in place to end the strike that has crippled the public health sector. The doctor's strike, which is now in its second month with no signs of let up, was a subject of a court process on Tuesday. Justice Brian Ongaya issuing a ruling following a case in which Kenyatta National Hospital sued the doctor's union camp EDU over the strike, extended orders stopping the strike. So we cannot say we have suspended the strike with a right to work agreement. The orders the judge gave were self effecting. And to that point, we know that those ones were complied with. Yes. Further, he ordered doctors in all level 3, 4, and 5 hospitals, which include National Referral Hospital, to provide health services. We had provided minimum services before, and we had given directions on that. Yes. But the government had refused because they had no plans. Justice Ongaya also cautioned against intimidation and harassment of union officials and doctors adding any disciplinary measures against them shall cease forthwith. Yes. And therefore, we believe... That will be a pathway to have resolving the issues that we raised in our strike notice. That's number one. And as the judiciary was giving direction, this was the situation at Parliament buildings. Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahumicha was taken to task by senators over the ongoing strike in the morning. In the afternoon, she was before the National Assembly to respond to similar concerns. During her grilling, Nahumicha 3 was spanna into the works, stating that the 2017 CBA expired in 2021, a statement that did not ogre well with the KMPDU officials. The ministry is also ready to negotiate on the CBA that is uh, the new CBA, because the CBA under KMPDU, it laps in 2021. But we are aware that from the Ministry of Labor is that once a CBA la uh, lapses until a new one is signed, that is when it comes into effect. So while the CBA is existing, we have not negotiated any other. No, the, the CBA is fully has to be implemented and the must run like that. She further informed legislators that 1,270 diploma clinical officer interns had been posted and posting letters of 1,210 medical pharmacists and dental officers were out. Abdias is Oshim for Prime Edition. <laughs> Right.
Right, we want to give you a very quick uh, flood update, but probably before we tell you what is happening in Kisumu, we just got a statement from the uh, Cabinet Secretary, Interior and National Administration, and much of it is an alert and public awareness for possible floods and saying, of course, that where at this point the public needs to be aware that there will be likely flash floods and all the dams that are called hydroelectric power dams, uh, most of them are at the risk of spillage. Um, but of course, it's a warning. Masinga Dam doesn't show a lot of signs, but it's a warning to communities living downstream to be absolutely careful. The government has heightened its surveillance um, over the possible uh, flash floods. But in the meantime, uh, Professor Kidure Kindiki is asking you to stay safe and be on the lookout. Still on that beat, at least 323 families have been displaced in Kisumu County as the raging floods continue to wreak havoc. Red, uh, Red Cross Society is warning about the possibility of an outbreak of waterborne diseases as over 100 pit latrines have been submerged. Most of the affected families have sought refuge in nearby schools. Achala Simon has a report from Kisumu. The raging floods in River Nyando is a scary reminder to thousands of households residing along the river and many other smaller streams in flood prone canoe plains of the calamity in the waiting. As the clock ticks, so does the water continue to fill and already visibly overwhelmed River Nyando banks. At least 323 families have been displaced in Nombaka, Magina, and Ahero areas, and locals now want a lasting solution to the perennial floods. <laughs> We have experienced so many losses. For example, around 10 cows have gone. Hoo -hoo. Red Cross Society in their report is warning of a possible outbreak of waterborne diseases as over 100 pit latrines have already been submerged in the floods. Families that are seeking shelter in schools have also stretched the facilities beyond their capacity. The county government is now being urged to urgently prioritize climate change interventions. We call upon the county government um, to implement the prioritized actions uh, as, as, as outlined in the PCRA, that is Participatory Climate Risk Assessment. And uh, uh, the document highlights the community needs in terms of the climate change priorities they need to be implemented for. We know the projects that are there. We also know the projects that they are supposed to do. But instead, what we are seeing, we don't know where they are coming from from the boardrooms and when it rains the women are left with the burden they also want transparent utilization of 217 million flocka fund the world bank and other donor partners are marked for building resilience amongst vulnerable communities we want them to be very transparent with this financing we would want them to post on the kisumu county website all budget documents and in those budget documents as civil society members we would want to see uh, a, a, a very clear way of identifying which projects are funded through flocka achala simon prime edition kisumu county and now the high court sitting in moranga has halted the decision of the director of public prosecutions dpp to charge former governor Mwagiwaria and nine others over graft charges. Justice Cecilia Githua issued the orders following an urgent application filed by the former Muranga governor saying the intended prosecution by the Directorate of Public Prosecution at Milimani Anti-Corruption Court is unconstitutional. Mwangi Wairia's spouse Genwa Igwe Kimani and his brother-in-law Solomon Mutura Kimani appeared before anti-corruption chief magistrate court on Wednesday afternoon. The duo were arraigned for plea taking after being arrested by ESCC officers of an alleged Moranga County government graft case amounting to over 140 million shillings. These orders have been issued after the church it was already been registered in Rome. That is what I mean. Before the court could issue orders sought by the prosecution, the defense counsels led by Wilfred Nyamu produced an order of the High Court stopping plea taking until further directions from the Superior Court. The order speaks to a decision that affects all, even those that have not filed 
this petition, who are not parties to this petition. Whether you discharge their appearance or not will be in violation of these orders. Because in my view, the decision to charge has been stayed. Based on the facts presented in the High Court, I've seen the application. From all these accused persons, from being charged in court, the matter before Magistrate Court will be mentioned on 29th April 2024 to confirm the progress of the applications pending before the High Court. There is no even an offence of obtaining. Elsewhere, a Congolese national accused of defrauding an international trade company over 156 million shillings will know his fate on Friday. Prosecuting counsel James Gashoka told the court that the accused entered Kenya using an interpass from Uganda despite holding a DRC Congo passport. Interestingly, at page 5, the first paragraph, the probation officer says that she saw a lease, however, the same ended in February. Thus, the accused person cannot be said to have an abode in the country. However, his defense counsel, led by Gordon Ogado, urged the court to release their client on bail, citing the prosecution has not adduced compelling evidence. This court has had arguments on the issue of bail. It has a rough idea of the issues in question, and therefore it can make a sound decision as to whether it can grant the orders for the, those particular documents to be assessed or not. Meanwhile, former chief executive officer of Java Chain of Hotels has finally been charged for defrauding a businessman 7.9 million shillings. The accused Derek Cornelius Van Houten appeared in court following a warrant of arrest issued against him by the trial magistrate Lucas Onina. Kenya shillings 500,000 with one contact person. Retrial mentioned on 26th of April this year. Michael Mondiga for Prime Edition. At this point, we're taking a short breather, but just to remind you that in our conversation tonight, we'll be engaging the Principal Secretary in the State Department for Mining, that is Elijah Mwangi, and we'll be talking about the status of Kenya's mining sector. Kumbuka. Kenya Revenue Authority is writing off penalties and interest on outstanding tax debt for tax periods up to 31st December 2022. Act now. Pay off your outstanding tax debt in easy installments by 30th June 2024 and watch those penalties and interests vanish. Scan the QR code or visit the KRA website for guidelines on how to apply. You can also call us on 0711 or visit any of the nearest KRA offices. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to set your tax records right. Anza Upia na KRA Tax Amnesty. Kenya Revenue Authority. Tulipe Ushuru, Tujitegeme. Casneb, your gateway to a world of possibilities. Casneb offers world-class qualifications in accounting, food investigations, management and governance, credit management, investment and financial analysis, ICT, and quality management. Visit www.casneb.or.ke and enroll today. Casneb. Shaping futures, transforming lives. Welcome to Sensei Institute. Mahali skill zangu ni pesa mkononi. At Sensei College, practical skills is the definition. Accredited by the government and founded on a Christian background, Sensei College offers all-rounded programs that are tailor-made to enhance your skills and give you the future you desire. We offer courses such as interior design, fashion and design, hairdressing and beauty, hospitality courses, trailer driving and defensive driving, building construction technology, CCTV, solar and electrical installation, photography and video production, electronic courses, vehicle electronics and mechanic courses, agricultural mechanics, ICT and many more. To enroll in any of our campuses in Nairobi and Nakuru, 
All you need is your national ID card. Mapema ndo best. Take advantage of our monthly intake. Come to Kusot na Skills. Sensei College, my skills, my future. Multi bonus. The Desha Shindiwako had the Asilimia Elfu Moja na multi bonus 1000%. Kuam Shirdi, Mozart Bet. Good evening, you're still watching Prime Edition. Absolutely, let's focus on one of the stories again that is causing national headlines. And motorists found violating traffic regulations are set to soon receive instant fines. President William Ruto presiding over the launch of the National Road Safety Action Plan for the next five years directed relevant agencies to decisively tackle corruption and impunity on our roads cited as the main contributors to road accidents. The launch of a five-year road safety action plan comes amid concerns over the influx in road fatalities. Statistics by the National Transport and Safety Authority for the last three months on road fatalities paints a grim picture on the situation of the roads with at least 1,200 deaths reported. But these are not just statistics. This is Nyota village in Kuresoi North, Nakuru County. This family has bore the brunt of the increase in road carnage after seven members of the same family perished in a tragic road accident along Mombasa Road. The somber mood telling of the extent of the problem. It is this reality that the five-year National Road Safety Action Plan is hoping to cure. The launch of the plan by President William Ruto in Nairobi sets the stage for radical measures to stem road accidents. Waziri, please, instant fines, 90 days is too much time for you to wait. President William Ruto, in pledging firm action against road traffic violators, directed government agencies to clamp down on those involved in bribery and the culture of impunity on the roads. We all know how the contribution of corruption aids overspeeding, reckless driving, drunk driving, and allows those who commit these crimes to escape. Transport CS Kipchumba Murkomen was also asked to ensure a drastic reduction in road fatalities. The numbers have not been coming down. The numbers have been going up. Every year, the numbers are going up. Waziri and your team, the numbers have to come down. The need to improve road infrastructure and deploy modern traffic technology to monitor the roads also featured prominently. 38% of the people will lose your excellence as pedestrians. 32% are border border riders and uh, your excellency followed now with the passengers who are 26 percent caused by psv vehicles and private vehicles a majority of our driver they train for 21 days the schools we have they train for 21 days and then we stay for more than uh, four years after four years you are told to drive a psv for prime edition i'm joseph Wahungu. President William Ruto is set to officiate the opening of the multi-billion shillings Bunge Towers that has taken over 10 years to complete. The opening of the building expected to house offices of legislators comes amid concerns by a section of legislators over the safety of the building. Separately, the fate of two of the 27 ambassadorial nominees appears sealed after the National Assembly adopted the report of the Foreign Relations Committee that rejected their nomination on grounds they lacked necessary skills for the job. After nearly a decade of construction, legislators began settling into the 27-story Bunga Towers ahead of Friday's official opening. As at Tuesday this week, 58 members had already occupied their new offices, even as a section of MPs queried the safety and the efficacy. Several construction works in some of the floors are still ongoing or others visibly including, like the gym, the kitchen, and the other day the delegation from the administrative arm of the parliament visited and uh, the, the, the lifts did not work. House Speaker Moses Wetangula, however, assured members of the safety of the building cautioning legislators against our substantiated claims. The contractor of the building does not owe Senator Charargay any duty to show him the completion certificate. Radiator MPO Tiende Amolo also called for a no date as the building was constructed 
at a cost of 9.6 billion shillings, up from the initial estimate of 5 billion shillings. Meanwhile, the fate of Charles Gedenji, nominated as Kenya's ambassador nominee to DRC, was sealed after the National Assembly occurred the report of the Defense and Foreign Relations Committee, rejecting his nomination. And that the appointing authority recalls any consul general who is serving without requisite approval by the National Assembly to undergo the necessary approval process. As members of that opinion say aye, aye. will those of the condo opinion say nay? nay, the ayes have it. Finally, the National Assembly is mulling over amending the Sexual Offences Act 2023 to criminalize seeking favor through sex, amend what they say are rising cases of sexual extortions for jobs and opportunities in the country. One, propose amendments to the Penal Code, Sexual Offences Act and other relevant criminal laws to explicitly define sextortion as an offence, make clear provisions on penalties, support for victims and for connected purposes. Gisho Kiwashira, Prime Edition. And now the Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy has called for public and private sector collaboration in the implementation of policies, laws and regulations for digital infrastructure. Speaking during the Digital Transformation and East Africa Conference, Information, Communication and Digital Economy Cabinet Secretary Elie Duwalo said the government is cognizant of the impact that digitization has on social development and is keen on leveraging on technology for growth in e-commerce. Speaking during the opening ceremony of the Digital Transformation in East Africa Conference, Ministry of Information, Communication and the Digital Economy Cabinet Secretary Elud Oalo commended the contribution of the Aga Khan Development Network to digital conversations. He called for public-private sector collaboration in the implementation of policies, laws and regulations for digital infrastructure in the country. It is our estimation that as opposed to the five years within which we had envisaged to roll out 100,000 kilometers of the fiber, we will now be able to roll out the 100,000 kilometers of fiber within the next two years. He noted that the government is keen on digital public infrastructure, scaling, innovation and entrepreneurship. The net effect of this is that each and every location or station where there is power connectivity, we will be able to have in equal measure fiber connectivity. The two-day global digital transformation conference is hosted by the Aga Khan University. Delegates at the conference are expected to explore the diverse facets of uh, digital innovations, shaping the region and delve into crucial digital transformation developments, including digital governance, generative AI, in healthcare and education, climate and sustainability. Irene Mchuma Odim, the Prime Edition. The government, in partnership with non-state actors, are organizing the first ever National Green Jobs and Skill Development Workshop in the country. The initiative will address access to economic opportunities for youth in Kenya in the green economy. And speaking at a high level, a round table on green jobs and skills development, the PS for Environment First as Ngeno said renovation or innovation in job creation will lead to green jobs and green skills development. The workshop, which will be held next month, will bring together government, academia, private sector and youth-led groups working in the green economy in the country. We came together with development partners to see how we can bring together our, uh, uh, come up with a synergy to ensure that we create these job opportunities. As we look for building up the synergies, building up our our economy, we want to just say that we want to expand the territories that the youth could be able to uh, engage in as, they, as we get these green jobs. And they are in various colleges as exposed, whether it is MSMEs, TFETs, uh, higher education. 9,595 teachers across the country are undergoing training 
in the wake of curriculum reforms to prepare them for training in the 21st century. The training targets junior secondary school teachers from across the 47 counties who teach pre-technical studies, agriculture and nutrition. More details in the County News Roundup. Act of teaching and therefore... The training of teacher has been ongoing in Nakuru, Machakos and Kisumu counties. In Nakuru, teachers were trained on tenets of inquiry-based learning to prompt learners identify problems and draw conclusions. Therefore, we are encouraging teachers so that for them to get the good practices getting into the classroom, one of the ways is by forming what we call communities of practice. Similar scenes were witnessed in Kisumu County as teachers were taken through sample lessons to ensure learning happens by way of engagement, exploration, elaboration, and evaluation. Separately, in Kisi County, ODM party delegates are faulted what they claim is harassment of Governor Simba Arati by national security agencies. They are threatening to mobilize locals to protest. We are incensed. We are not happy. We are concerned that the harassment and intimidation of our governor has gone howry. Elsewhere in Meru, the U.S. government committed 3.5 billion shillings to war supporting 11 counties, improve financial management, reduce fraud and curb wastage. Na hii survey itaeza kusaidia serikari tuseme kwelekea mbele kujipanga kwa mikakati ama policies za kuweza kujua hizi uh, shida ambazo watoto wa under 5 wanaweza kuwa wana, wanaona wakiwa hapo manyumbani vile zinaweza tatuliwa and operations of the Kakamega County Commissioner's Office were temporarily halted after the body of a man was discovered behind the county offices the man is alleged to have been electrocuted as he attempted to steal electrical cables at night. Vijana wadogo kuwawa hivi ama kujiuwa, suwe sijua ni nini imeuwa, lakini nimeshangazwa. Finally, in Kajado, a multi-agency team raided a premise within Megingo, known Kopir Township, and recovered 600 rounds of ban and 10 liters of changa packed inside cement bags. Several people were arrested during the crackdown. Hata saini mchana na pombe inakunyua. Hata watu mtu wawezi yenda kazi ya kuni. Eh, hiyo ndiyo kitu tunafaa tu namba serikali watu punguzie pombe. <tos>
Welcome back. We take a look at the day's business news. My name is Wairi Mujenga. There is need to support innovation and indigenous inv inv inventions rather for scalability and sustainability in the ICT sector in the country. Communication Authority of Kenya Director General David Mugoni says a collaborative approach instead of competition between the public and private sector is key to drive the growth in the ICT sector. The ICT sector has seen a surge in adoption, innovation and investment with its growth rate outpacing other industries by up to 2.5 times. We now need to start seriously thinking about how we can be able to support the innovations that are coming out of Kenya and homegrown solutions. To recognize excellence and innovation, the Communications Authority of Kenya has introduced a new category in the COSA Awards to honor licensees who excel in technological advancements and digital inclusivity. We realized we could add more value to the two events by merging them and expanding the awards to incorporate the fullness of the ICT sector. The award shall now be called the COSA ICT Awards. The Kusa ICT Awards is expected to provide a platform for showcasing the latest innovations and creativity in embracing new technologies in the digital space. Under this new arrangement, the ICT Week 24 will culminate with the first edition of the Kusa ICT Awards. This expansion broadens the scope of the awards to recognize excellence across various regulated services in the ICT industry. For a month, starting from Monday next week, the public will have the opportunity to cast votes for their favorite nominees in broadcast, cybersecurity, and telecommunications. Trevor Nendo for Prime Edition. Now, the coconut value chain is set to receive a budgetary allocation to drive an increase in the crop production over the next five years. Agriculture, Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi says the support to coconut production is aimed at reducing Kenya's edible oil import bill and creating jobs. Kenya has been keen on reducing its edible oil import bill that is estimated at 160 billion shillings annually. Now plans are on to increase production of canola, coconut, sunflower and soya beans and other nuts to increase edible oils production. For coconut, the target is to increase productivity of a single coconut tree from the current 35 nuts per year to 150 nuts. Ukiangalia kule ametaya kama sunflower, korosho, yonasi, those are the priority pro, uh, pro, uh, the crops that the government is trying to promote so that we are able to bring down the cost of oil, edible oil in the country. The coconut value chain is expected to receive budgetary allocation to boost production. To reduce sunflower, to reduce cotton, to reduce simsim, to reduce cassava. Ili hizi zipatie wananchi wetu pesa. Kaka kuungana na watu wa pwani, ili waweze kusika na serikali kuu, weza kupanga kurundisha kilimo katika mbukua wa pwani. The program will also cover the cashew nut subsector, as the government seek to revitalize the coastal region economy. Tumekuwa nayo ni ya kukosa korosho za kutosha. So unapata orders tunazo pata sa ingine hatuwezi kuzipeana zote. Benson Ryoba reporting for Prime Edition. The cost of insurance is likely to go up if Parliament adopts a proposal to effect a 16% VAT on insurance services. This according to an analysis by Ernst & Young on the proposed 2024-2025 budget that also calls for a review of a proposal to impose a 5% withholding tax on agricultural product produce delivered to cooperatives. The insurance penetration, which is the ratio of total insurance premiums to gross domestic product, currently stands at 2.43% in Kenya. Among factors blamed for the low insurance penetration is the high cost of premiums. The question is, do you really want now to go back in that particular section, that session, I mean, uh, a sector that you are also, on the other hand, saying that you want to promote? Um, as far as VAT goes, that becomes a burden to this particular person. Remember, they can't deduct it. They can't claim it. Maybe they're not even the greatest for VAT for starters. 
tax consultants at Ernst & Young filed a proposal to introduce a 16% VAT on insurance service, and this year's budget is likely to adversely affect insurance uptake. Uh, is that uh, you're increasing a portion of a very essential commodity by 16%. Number two, you'll also have insurance premiums for those in the insurance sector. And if, you're paying, if you usually pay 10K, now somebody is telling you to increase the same. The tax consultants are also concerned about a proposal to introduce a 5% withholding tax on agricultural produce delivered to cooperatives, which is meant to expand the tax bracket. Clustering in terms of Wajil, you're doing camels, how do you tax that? And encourage Kirinyaga, Kiambu and all that to be in tea and coffee and give them mud revenues like the way we have seen in some countries, some countries like Uttar Pradesh. Ernst & Young recommends implementation of cluster taxation within the agricultural value chain. Implementation of the national tax policy and the medium-term revenue strategy is expected to raise 2.95 billion shillings as ordinary revenue. Absa Kenya has, says it has invested 18 billion shillings in various real estate projects, among them affordable housing and student accommodation. Absa Bank Kenya Managing Director Abdi Mohammed said through strategic property investments and construction projects, ABSA is driving economic and community development, creating jobs and enhancing infrastructure. He was speaking at the 11th Annual East African Property Investment Summit. Everything is moving digital, so there's, we are, there's a lot of automation processes going on, like m -Pesa integration, bank integration, where there's also been like a lot of cases where landlords are uh, and developers are complaining about rental frauds. We've been seeing people uh, going for years without paying rent and because there are no system where you can check, you have to download statements for them to, to view and manually check. So now we are coming up with such solutions to create a better bond between developers, landlords and even the, the clients. So there's a lot of externalization of infrastructure cost by the government because the growth in real estate, which has been very rapid in the last 20 years, has not been matched by expansion in infrastructure. Footwear Multinational Butter is set to open 10 stores and 7 franchise stores in Kenya in an expansion plan that has seen the firm invest over 400 million shillings in the last three years. Butter Shoe Kenya Managing Director Benson Okumu says the firm is targeting to a growth of 15% in both retail and production that will be powered by an expansion in its footprint and distribution network. For the last three years, we have spent over 400 million in terms of investing back into the country. And uh, that has been in form of investing into our state-of-the-art facility in Limuru. It has been in form of also doing facelifts into our stores and in terms of opening new stores. This year alone, we will open our own new stores, 10 new stores for butter. For butter. And apart from that, we have also gone into a new channel of a go-to-market channel of domestic franchising and will open another seven domestic franchise stores into the year. So you can imagine with that kind of an investment of 400 million, yes, we are here to stay. We grew by 27 percent. That is year 2023 compared to year 2022. That is in terms of the top line. This year in our budget, we have factored a growth of 15 percent and I think we will beat it. The shilling went to up to 162 to, to the dollar. It was very, very tough uh, for us, but we are happy that now it is coming to the, to the ranges of 130. So that has given us, that has given us quite some big uh, advantage in our business. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, Sammy, are you ready? Well, that marks the end of business news tonight. We take you straight to JJ Carrier, who is in studio with our guest of the night, that is Elijah Mwangi, who is the Principal Secretary for Mining. My name is Oremu Jenga. Have a good night. Back to the future. The future is still neat, but smarter. Win faster now. Be a winner. More than bit.
Our conversation tonight features the Principal Secretary in charge of Mining, the State Department for Mining, Elijah Mwangi, who joins me in studio. Thank you very much, PS, um, for joining us. And of course, welcome to KBC Channel 1. Oh, thank you, John. Karibu sana. Briefly, probably, begin by explaining to us um, the role of the State Department for Mining. Well, thank you, John, and uh, good evening, viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, the State Department for Mining was established uh, through executive order, uh, one of 2022. Mm -hmm. But mining activities has been happening in this country for the last one and, uh, 120 years. Mm -hmm. If you visit some of uh, our regions, you will find the old colonial uh, mine shafts that are still operational today. And uh, for information, it's good to inform the viewers that uh, the mining sector can contribute significantly uh, to the development and growth of the economy of Kenya. Mm. Our target is to ensure that we contribute up to 10% of GDP <coughs> uh, from mining. Mm -hmm. uh, the mining by itself may denote as if uh, extractive, mm. but we are concerned with the value chain from a reconnaissance that is uh, searching for minerals, uh, prospecting, uh, trading that is buying and selling, uh, processing and mining itself. In essence, anybody who wants to carry out any business to do with uh, handling of minerals uh, must obtain a uh, mining license. But mm -hmm. before then, mm -hmm. uh, for us to achieve the 10% uh, GDP that we aspire, uh, we have and uh, we have done it uh, uh, several reforms mm -hmm. and one of the reforms is that uh, there is need to have data uh, for all our mineral resources and through the National Airborne Geophysics Survey that identified over 970 mineral currencies across the country mm -hmm. uh, we are carrying out an activity to confirm uh, the economic value and the quantity and the quality of those uh, mineral currencies. Mm -hmm. It is an excess that is ongoing. Our anticipation is that by June this year, we shall have achieved uh, over 24 uh, counties. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have different form of minerals. Uh, we have industrial minerals. Industrial minerals mostly are used in our industries, the limestone, the gypsum, uh, pozzolana, and the like. Mostly when we uh, are doing krinka or cement, uh, we use industrial minerals. Then we have construction minerals. These include the ballast. It include the construction stones and the likes. Then we have our critical minerals as a country. Uh, last month, our cabinet secretary, Honorable Sari Mvuria, informed the world that Kenya has this rare earth called coltan. Mm. But it's not only cotton, we have also niobium and others. So those strategic minerals, including chromite, uh, copper, and the likes, are reserved for the national government to determine who is going to invest on them mm -hmm. through the National Mining Corporation. Mm -hmm. But for us to be able to achieve uh, and understand the mineral resources that we have, there was need for us to modernize our lab. Mm. We have a, a lab in Nairobi, Madini House, but we intend to decentralize this lab across the country. In essence, we have already identified nine uh, counties, uh, formerly the, the former provincial headquarters, and we have procured adequate equipment so that those people who are carrying out mining, they do not need to come to Nairobi mm. to bring their samples. And, uh, the sampling or testing of those minerals is very critical because it is through them that you are able to tell the quality of the minerals that you have. Mm -hmm. And also, when you are charging loyalties, you need to know the kind of mineral. Mm. There are some minerals that are almost look alike. For instance, uh, we have quartz, we have uh, 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 chromite, we have manganese, they almost look uh, almost alike. Mm. But through uh, testing, you are able to tell uh, the kind of uh, minerals they are that you charge accordingly. Mm. Also, we are also considering uh, formalization of our artisanal miners. Uh, These small scale, those people who are earning their livelihood from 
the minerals that are about within their community. Mm. In, essentially, they used to just operate. They were not recognized by the government. This government in October last year, 2023, the cabinet decriminalized the activities of artisanal mining. Mm. That means that right now, uh, we do not harass our small scale, those artisanal mining. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, whatever they are doing, it is for their livelihood. However, uh, the, we have a mandate. And uh, what we are doing is that we are encouraging them to form marketing cooperatives. So far, we have over 246 marketing cooperatives across the country. And then uh, we have gazetted in each and every county artisanal mining committee. Artisanal mining committee are meant to give permits or mining, uh, mining permits or prospecting permits to the artisanals within their counties. Mm. If in the makeup of those artisanal mining committee has representative of miners themselves. So they are able to tell miners themselves eh, who are the members within their community. Mm. And out of that, we feel that uh, we shall reduce uh, by large extent uh, illegal operators. Mm. Because uh, it is through artisanal mining where uh, those who intend to engage in illegal uh, mining, they usually tend to use artisanal miners. Mm. And once they are formalized to cooperative, uh, we are going to capacity build them. We are training them right now. And we intend also to provide some uh, financial support to them. Mm. But more importantly, we will be able to regularize them such that their activities can be known by the government. And we have through the regional mines office extension services who are able to reach out to them and provide uh, some uh, information especially on how to carry out uh, good mining practice because of uh, conservation of en environment. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very much keen on value addition. For the country to grow, we are discouraging export of unprocessed uh, minerals. Mm. Uh, any, any time that unprocessed minerals get out of this country, it is aroused to the government through the value of the royalties that we could have received mm -hmm. to the employment that could have been created through uh, the creation of the infrastructure, the industries that could carry out those processes in this roast. But also, there are some benefits that comes along by having industries within a region. For instance, in the Mining Act, Anybody who is carrying out mining, they are supposed to have Community Development Agreement Committee. Mm. This committee is meant to receive uh, some monetary allocations uh, from the mining company. Mm. And therefore, any company that is doing value addition, the value of the benefit or the financial benefit that the community will receive in form of Community Development Agreement is higher compared to the value that will be received when we are dealing with raw uh, minerals. Mm. And to that extent, uh, to date, uh, we have uh, already found investors who are carrying out value addition to some of our minerals. For instance, uh, we have an investor who intended to have a gold refinery in mm -hmm. Kakamega. Mm -hmm. uh, this one will be a game changer because we have so much gold in this our country, mm -hmm. but majority of them just goes and pro, uh, within uh, the system, it got lost and the government does not benefit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, with this gold refinery, the intention is that all the gold that is produced in Kenya uh, shall be uh, defined in that uh, gold refinery and we shall be able to track all our gold across the country. Then we have a granite uh, processing plant that we intend to have in Viga. We have identified an investor who is willing to put some money, 2.5 billion, in that uh, investment. And uh, since we have so many uh, locks, if you use that word in uh, Viga mm. County, mm. this shall be now an economic benefit to them. In the rocky area of Viga. The rocky area of Viga. All mm -hmm. those rocks are granite. Mm -hmm. And uh, we intend to have a station whereby those people of Vihiga will be bringing their, those rocks uh, to that granite processing plant. Mm. It will be added value and uh, shall be used the here locally. In uh, area market, there used to be Frosper Mining Company. Mm -hmm. It crossed uh, quite some years ago. We have already identified an investor who is putting around 
4.8 billion to revive these uh, frost per company, right. which is going to employ um, over 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the areas where we have identified the investors for value chain. Mm -hmm. But however, mm -hmm. our intention is to ensure that the county which have adequate minerals, for instance, we have a lot of copper in Kitui and Rakandidi. Mm -hmm. Our intention is to ensure that we have somebody who is going to put up a copper processing plant in that area. When you go to Bigori, you also find a lot of copper there. Mm -hmm. When you go to coast, there is a lot of titanium and uh, everywhere where we go. Recently last week, but one. Let we me cut you short just a bit, uh, PS, so that we pay some bills and then return. All right. You finish up. And then we'll talk about um, the aspect of ensuring that local communities where, other than what you're saying, unprocessed minerals, the aspect of mining for local communities. How are you ensuring that local communities are not deprived of a resource within their area? We're taking a short breather. We're coming back in a minute. Don't go too far. You're watching Prime Edition. We're still here with the PS Elijah Mwangi, the PS State Department for Mining. Must admit, he really did his homework. Um, before we took a break, you were talking about this copper in Kitui and Therakaniti, and there's uh -huh. something you're doing about it very briefly uh -huh. before we get to the aspect of um, how local communities are benefiting. Well, uh, thank you, John. <coughs> we were considering the value addition and what the government intended to do uh, in matters of the, the minerals that are found in abundance mm -hmm. in our counties. Mm -hmm. I was given an illustration of Kitui and Rakanidi where we have a lot of copper. And uh, our intention is to ensure that rather than having those copper exported uh, and processed, we have a plan to ensure that anybody who wants to carry out pr mining in that county uh, must establish a processing plant in that county, which we shall base <coughs> uh, the application evaluation of that particular person equally. When we got to West Pakot, recently we had our president who uh, went there and commissioned mm. uh, 45 billion uh, cement or creek processing plant. Mm. And it is going to change the landscape and the economic of West, uh, that is uh, West Pakot. Now, uh, coming to the community, yes. our constitution provides that minerals belong to the people of Kenya. Mm. And we are the people of Kenya. The Minister of Mining is there to safeguard the interest of the minerals for the people of Kenya. And any time that we give out license, our intention is that those who are carrying out exploitation of minerals, mm. they will pay what is meant to be paid. We charge royalties uh, as a substitute to the exploitation of our minerals. The royalties is paid to the national government, but 20% of what is corrected by our ministry goes back to the community mm. through the county government. So 20% of our, all our royalties go to the county, and 10% goes to the community. Mm -hmm. So community benefit from the royalties that is collected by the national government. So what, I'm, uh, called, uh, what I may ask to uh, our Kenyan people, mm. if you find somebody carrying out mining within your area, uh, you need to ask yourself, and it is us who has been given that responsibility. Does this person have a license? Because anybody who is operating without a license, most likely they are not paying the relevant royalties. No. If they don't pay those royalties, and you are supposed to get 10% of what has been collected 
uh, to the to the community the community the where the mining communities. is operating, yeah. you lose. Okay. For instance, I want to give a, a scenario of uh, Kware County, mm. where base titanium has been operational. Every year, we correct royalties from base titanium. And right now, through the county government additional allocation fund, Kware County are meant to get of a 1.1 billion. Mm. That is 20%. So 10% of that is of a 500 million. Mm. So the 500 million will go to the community. So if the community were to safeguard the minerals that are being exploited within the area, they are going to, and how are they, they going to safeguard that? Uh, these miners come to the community, uh, they give them small token, uh, the community owns that, and in instance, they sign consent. When they sign consent, they have given permission somebody to carry out mining right, right. and therefore they are going to lose mm -hmm. and what we are doing is to ensure that through our mining police unit which is a special police unit mm -hmm. uh, we intend to ensure that we get rid of illegal operations across the country illegal operators are anybody who is buying and selling any form of minerals without license anybody who is mining without a license Anybody who is uh, carrying out prospecting activities or processing without a license. Uh, the special police unit, that is mining unit, police, are there to safeguard the enforcement and compliance. Mm -hmm. And we shall be going to those people who are carrying out those illegal mining so that the people of Kenya can benefit. Yes, that's about royalties. Talk about environmental sustainability because, I mean, um, some of the issues that have been raised when it comes to the subject of mining is the environmental sustainability of the very act of mining. It is true <laughs> that uh, uh, mining, especially when you are carrying out extractives, mm. you have to interfere with the environment. However, we have safeguards. Those uh, people who apply for a mining or a prospecting license, they are required to provide a NEMA license. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, there is environmental impact assessment that is also carried by NEMA. But when we come to our enforcement and inspectorate uh, division within our ministry, we have team from the regional mines office who goes around uh, ensuring that the activities that are being carried out from the mining uh, do not go against uh, the environmental. But we had appreciate that uh, we have some rogue people mm. uh, who are uh, doing against what uh, the law requires. But going forward, uh, we have introduced an uh, environmental board. So anybody who will be receiving a um, mining license must pay an environmental board, mm -hmm. which shall be used uh, to reinstate the area uh, if they go against uh, the requirement that was given during the uh, licensing of their uh, operations. Mm. Uh, we have our national mining corporation. This is an uh, investment arm of the government. Initially, it was not operationalized. Currently, they have hired, they have a board, and the intention of the National Mining Corporation is to partner or go into joint venture with anybody who wants to carry out exploitation of our strategic minerals. Uh, we have at least 14 strategic minerals, which include uh, copper, uh, we have chromite, we have rails, we have cotton, we have uh, niobium, uh, and, and such. Mm. So anybody who wants to carry out uh, exploitation, uh, prospecting, or dealing with those minerals must uh, talk to the National Mining Corporation. Why, why are we doing so? Mm. Uh, you know, for us to grow, we must safeguard what is dear to us. It is a country, those minerals I've mentioned, among us others, are dear to us. Okay. We don't want just exploitation, but we want to ensure that the government has a hand in the exploitation. Mm. More so, uh, we have developed several regulations, including amendment of our Mining Act. And one of the items that we have introduced there is a mineral development levy. Mm -hmm. This mineral development levy will be operated like the other levies, the fuel levy, uh, and the likes. And uh, the essence is to have some FAD, which shall be used by the ministry, mm. to have continuity in exploitation and mm. in exploration of the mineral resources, mm. uh, which we have. Mm. Allow me to talk about uh, the leveraging on ICT. Very quickly. 
because this government uh, has a, a digital uh, element. We use online mining cadastre mm. in application of our licenses. And uh, the purpose is to ensure that uh, there is transparency and accountability in giving licenses. However, uh, we have digitized our royalty collection system. We have digitized our explosive uh, system. And we have digitized our artisanal uh, system. So uh, going forward, we shall not be accepting uh, the manual, mm. but uh, we shall be digital. But lastly, mm. let me give uh, uh, an insight to Kenyan. Yes. Currently, we know it is rainy season. Mm. And uh, if you go around, you may find some landslides here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, people there who are operating in shafts. Uh, we are calling upon anybody who, we do, who is doing mining, at least to give themselves a space during this rainy season mm -hmm. because water may come into their tunnels and uh, we do not want to have a station whereby we shall be reporting uh, calamities. Mm -hmm. And two, we ask uh, those people who are carrying out mining, kindly, we have our uh, mining system operational. Please apply for your mining license. If you are buying, ensure that you obtain mineral transport a permit from our regional mines office, but more importantly, don't mine without the necessary license. We are there to support you. Right. The government is not there to come for you. The uh, police unit is just there for enforcement, but let's work together <laughs> so that we can realize uh, the benefit that comes with uh, these minerals that God endowed to us uh, to this country. Mm. Thank you very much, P.S., um, for joining us tonight. I mean, it's been an eye-opener, 10% of our GDP coming from uh, the mining sector, and that is the state um, of uh, the mining sector in the country. Uh, most importantly, the warning from the P.S. to avoid mm -hmm. disaster. Please mm -hmm. keep off mining at this time um, of the rains, and probably you can resume. But most mm -hmm. importantly, also licensing. A very important matter. Thank you, yeah, P.S. Really Elijah Bangi, yeah. for joining us tonight. We now cross over to um, Okumu Bernard for the spots. But before then, another commercial short break. Sports News is brought to you by Mozart B. Meanwhile, time for sports. Thank you so much for joining us at this hour. I'm Bernardo Kumu. Let's begin with athletics uh, where the Soul Systems go ahead of the fifth Keep Keino Classic Continental Tour meet set for Saturday at the Nyayo National Stadium. Now, according to Sports Kenya Director General Pius Meto, the stadium is ready uh, following completion of renovations on the Tartan track as well as the surface where the field events will be happening. Sports Kenya Director General Pius Meto has urged Kenyans to turn up in numbers to cheer local athletes. I want to say that we are ready. We have done what uh, is expected of us to do uh, to ensure that the event moves on uh, smoothly. We've done all the basic things that were required by the Federation and we are ready to host Kipeno Classic on Saturday. Foreign athletes are set to jet in from tonight with one 100 meter silver medalist Lesile Tebogo from Botswana expected to be the first to touch down ahead of Saturday's showdown in 200 meters. Kenya is hopeful of the Continental Tour being upgraded to a Diamond League meet after this year's edition. Everything is ready for Saturday. Uh, the most important items arrived yesterday uh, from Timetronics, which of course uh, is a must that uh, we have it here in Kenya. Uh, we, the government has really supported us in acquiring some of this top-of-the-heart uh, uh, timing equipment and also any other aspect of the items that is required in this stadium. So we are very thankful and we have those equipment here uh, in the stadium and it is going to be started being placed along the, the, the stadium areas where it's supposed to be. The event is returning to Nyayo National Stadium, which hosted the first event in 2020. 
Saturday's meet will include national discretionaries and co-events with the key highlight being a rematch between Ferdinando Manyala, who will be defending his title against Olympic silver medalist Kenneth Banarek of USA, who finished second last year. And to soccer now, where a target of 100 talents has been set for identification and towels to Europe during this year's fifth edition of the Rausha Kipaji football tournament set to kick off tomorrow at both the Nakuru Boys and Girls High Schools in Nakuru. 250 teams, including 30 girls teams, have confirmed their presence in Nakuru for the four-day event ending on Sunday. That will be competing in this year's Rausha Kipaji tournament arrive today in Nakuru ahead of tomorrow morning's kickoff. We have different forums for, for the children. Apart from just playing football, we'll have some talks with them. We've invited uh, one of the agencies that uh, deals with the youth to come and talk to them as they play. More than 2,000 junior players will be fighting for the 100 available slots to travel to Europe for trials in addition to helping their respective teams win this year's Rausha Kipaji football title. We have around 50, between 40 and 50 that have been identified before. Uh, last year we had some that were identified uh, by Kenya Academy of Sports. Uh, we have others that have been identified by teams playing in the National uh, Super League and Division 1 teams. The event will run for four days with scouts on the ground as they hunt for the talented players in all the age groups who will get the scholarship chances as well as playing opportunities in Europe. In the previous editions that we've had, we've only had one category for girls. This year we are fortunate to be having three categories. So I will say as we continue to grow, we will like to have... Uh, an, equ an equality of the boys and the girls in terms of competition. The fifth edition, whose preparations were completed today, has attracted about 250 teams, with 30 of them being girls' teams. Buckley Feather, Prime Edition Sports. Well, thank you so much, Buckley Feather, for that report from Nakuru and over to other more news making headlines in soccer where over 140 young footballers attended a seven-day football clinic conducted by vfb stuttgart coaches from germany now the footballers are from kenya elite soccer academy were taken through several playing skills the kids were beneficiaries of the partnership between vfb stuttgart and germany embassy through german school in nairobi as a corporate social responsibility according to vfb stuttgart coach manuel beeridge the partnership will be annual and will entail different levels of training. CAF A licensed coach Musa Tieno, who was among the two local coaches who trained the upcoming footballers, applauded the initiative which he said will go a long way in equipping Kenyan football academies. KESA is a sports for development organization from Kibra, leveraging on football to drive change in the community. To teach and to learn uh, the, and to improve the basics uh, like dribbling, like passing, yeah, it's all about the first touch, yeah, if, you, if you know about football. Um, and so we do the most basics, and now at the moment they do a little tournament. It is not a partnership of VFP, uh, Stuttgart with the kickoff to Up Kenya. There is Nabu Nyandaro, now you have come here to the Germany school. I think it's just a matter of intermingling with the coaches and to, to see how we can help our youngsters to get that further education into coaching, because you can see that uh, the big challenge is always the grassroots level. And to Afghan futsal now, where Egypt will face Angola, while hosts Morocco will take on Libya on Friday in the semi-finals of the ongoing Futsal Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. Now Atlas Lions uh, booked their place in the last four with their hard 47-6 win over debutants Mauritania, while Libya did stun Namibia 11-5. Now the semi-finals, which will be played on Friday, will be live on KBC Channel 1 as well as Y254 TV. Egypt and Libya showcased their dominance to secure spawns in the semi-final with the impressive victories at the Car Futsal Afcon on Tuesday night. The match between Egypt and Mauritania was a tense affair, with the pharaohs threatening whenever they ventured into the Mauritanian half. Mohamed Mohamed's early attempts crashed into the side netting, setting the tone for relenting Egyptians attack. The Pharaohs cruised to a pretty one-sided 10-3 victory, finishing top of the group. 
Meanwhile, Libya produced a stellar 11.5 second half performance to overcome Namibia and advance alongside Egypt into the semi finals. And surely an opportunity, a first goal straight away. Egypt topped Group B with nine points, while Libya finished as runners up with six points. Mauritania's debut appearance ended with a third place finish, while Namibia finished bottom without a point. For Prime Edition, I'm Sela Onyango. Well, and on that note, uh, futsal edition of uh, futsal note is how we end tonight's edition of sports. Thank you so much for watching. Have a restful night and enjoy the rest of your viewing. I'm Bernardo Kumo. Sports News was brought to you by Mozart Bait. You can lift the plane. The higher you fly, the higher you win. The sky is the limit. More that bet. And of course, that puts a cap on Prime Edition. Thank you very much uh, for watching. And indeed, up next is the, the Rave. My name is John Jacob Curia. Have yourself a good night. Have a good night. Just remember to die daily. I'm Regina Manyara. Ta mtu wa baraka kama askiza chuni yako bonyeza star 812 star 503 hash wewe ni kwa nini unafurahia vipaji ila si anayetoa kwa nini unapenda baraka kumpeni mtu wa baraka